Hey, what's up guys? It's Jeff from Wonder Dog Sports. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about statistics. I came across a Twitter thread by someone named Kareem Carr, and I'm gonna to link to that here in the description. Uh, and she talks about what she learned in statistics by being an expert in that. And she came up with eight principles. And I wanna talk you through those, because I read them and I resonate with them, and I can definitely apply them to how I approach sports betting. I'm a very statistical-minded person, uh, studied that at Northwestern. It's what I use in my handicapping, and it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. Uh, some people look at statistics and just say, I don't understand it, let me look at something else. Um, but the, for those of you that are interested in taking a statistical approach to handicapping, if you're doing it yourself, these are important principles, I think, that you can apply in sports betting. And I wanna walk through what she had to say and give you my bent on that. Okay, so these were the eight principles that she learned while studying statistics that she thinks can help others. Let me go through each one and give you some thoughts. Principle number one, good rules often fail. People are often surprised when great seeming rules fail. She rarely is. People who rely too much on binary logic-based thinking will find one exception to a rule and immediately trash the whole rule. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Great point here. How does this apply to sports betting? Well, we often come up with systems, okay? And that's really what we're doing. Is we, we, have, we come up with a system to predict the outcome of games, and then we use that system uh, to make our bets, and we, if we're doing it right, we're tracking the results, and we're looking and to see if that system works. And when it does, and it's working consistently, it's great. That's when we're on a winning streak and <clears throat> nothing can fail. But what happens when a system that used to work stops working or it looks like it may stop working? This is one of the biggest challenges I have when I have a bunch of systems that have been historically correct and then things change and they start to lose. Is it a short-term normal variance because you cannot win every time and is it gonna bounce back or something fundamentally shifted that that system doesn't work anymore? Her uh, caution is to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. If something just looks like it isn't working anymore, don't just toss it out. Um, there's risk on the other side of hanging on too long. And I'm, I'm guilty of this. Uh, I started my career handicapping at the NFL and I absolutely crushed it for years with underdogs. Just underdog, underdog, underdog. I was destroying the books. And I settled into something in my mind that says, Picking NFL underdogs is the only way to go, and that's how I'm gonna do it forever. It's how I put my name on my company, but I learned that some things changed, and, and I fell victim to that uh, really two seasons where I lost back-to-back -back after winning for five or six straight seasons in the NFL, and I had to adjust. I had to ask myself, what's changed, and, and what's what can I keep that was working, and what do I need to adjust? And and I shifted then to uh, betting more favorites and more balance. I have not given up on underdogs, but I had to be more selective with them and add in more favorites and totals to get back to my winning ways. Okay, that was principle number one. Principle number two, good rules fail well. So principle one was good rules often fail. Principle two, good rules fail well. And she said when she, uh, when she hears about a new rule, her first question is about the frequency and severity of its mistakes. It's fine to, if tiny mistakes are common, the worst mistakes should be extremely rare. So if we have a system, uh, first of all, we should be setting up that up in a logical way. If we say we're gonna bet underdogs after uh, a 21 to 23 point loss on Monday Night Football, that's not real logical. It may prove in the past to have worked and predicted correctly uh, winners in the next game, but it's probably more like chance. Um, a better system is one that makes logical sense to you. And so when it fails, it needs to make sense when it fails. It needs to not happen that often, and it shouldn't be massive failures constantly. So a good rule is one that will fail, but we want to look at the severity and the frequency of when it fails and assess that. Okay, principle number three, information isn't free. This is an important one because it looks like on the surface, information is free. There is a ton of information out on the internet and I utilize that. I scrape a lot of sources, 
I get information to utilize in my systems and my models. But we need to think of it as a commodity, okay? It costs time and money to obtain and to analyze and to manipulate and to store. Um, are you committed to making sure that you are analyzing information and making assessments about what information is good, what information is not good, and the ROI of obtaining and using that information. Principle number four, risk is a currency. This is an interesting one. She says, we use risk to purchase more of what we want in life. Think about that. We're all different, we all have different levels of risk aversion. Those of us that like to bet on sports tend to have a high, pretty high tolerance for risk. In fact, we like it, it motivates us. It gives us something to, more interesting, a, a reason uh, to watch a game because we've got something risked on it. And it gives us a sense of uh, excitement and motivation. A lot of people, and those are your friends that, that are not into sports betting and might claim like, oh, I can't, I can't say I'm losing. Probably pretty risk averse, okay? But in life, even those people have to take risks in order to get something. Usually people don't succeed in life or, or thrive by simply sitting back and doing nothing risk averse and just having all the spoils come to them. The people who thrive the most are the ones willing to take the most risks. So it is a currency and we have to make a personal choice as to how much of that currency we want to expend in order to get what we want. So she says, much like with money, there are good deals and bad deals to be had, but the decision about how much risk is appropriate is inherently subjective and personal. I talk about this in uh, one of my videos in my How to Win series, which by the way, you should watch. It's on YouTube. You can sign up on my website, wonderdog.com to get the full series sent to you for free. Uh, but the amount of risk you're willing to take, you have to be able to assess that and you have to apply that to your handicapping situations. And so there aren't often exact rules about, should I make this bet? Should I make the bet if the line has changed? How much of my bankroll should I risk? There's some inherent subjectivity to these decisions and getting clear with yourself over where you stand on that is important and trying to be consistent on that is, is important as well. So. Think of risk as a currency, understand where you are on the spectrum of risk averse to uh, risk seeking. Okay, next principle. More information isn't always use useful. Now we talked about information not really being free, that's true. Sometimes though, we have too much information and more is not always better. Um, a perfect example of this is trying to make successful sports picks by listening to talking heads on TV, ESPN announcers, sports center anchors, um, or even your friends, your buddy who used to play AAA college baseball. More information is not always useful. You have to be able to discern what information is noise and what information is actually predictive. And the way that I do that, there's some experience that you gain over many decades of doing this, but you really gotta take that information and track it. Test it out, back test it if you can, to see if it's actually predictive and uh, and then for sure track things going forward to say, is this a piece of information that is adding to my model or is it subtracting from it? All information is not always good all the time. Okay, next principle, number six, <clears throat> huge amounts of biased information is often much worse than no information at all. So this ties into what I was just talking about. Stop thinking more information is always better. The quality of the information matters a lot. I have spent decades doing this and I narrow down to the kind of data and the information that I find useful, something that adds to my model and makes it more predictive and doesn't subtract. Now, I'm constantly on the lookout for new information. I'm constantly finding people that are building new uh, analytical and predictive models out there and saying, can I use this? Is the data in a form that's accessible, affordable, and in a way that I can plug into my model and backtest it. That's an important piece for me. If I can't backtest it, I really don't know if it's, if it's useful information and I have to assume it's probably not information that's gonna help me unless it really makes logical sense that it could be something that is not in the public domain uh, that I can add to my model. And something being not in the public domain is an important concept because the sports betting market is fairly efficient, it's fairly knowledgeable, especially in high uh, interest sports like the NFL. Most people know, and the betting market knows most information all the time. If you're able to get information that the betting market doesn't know about, like an injury that hasn't been announced yet, it's gold. 
but most of us, most of the time, don't get that information, but seek it out. Okay, seventh principle. Prior knowledge multiplies the effectiveness of your data. Some people wrongly assume that it's always best to ignore expert behavior and le learn directly from the raw data. For a fixed amount of data, the more one can safely assume, the more one can learn. Okay, really important concept. This is basically saying, does experience matter? And it does matter, especially in statistical analysis. Uh, over the past 25 years for me doing this professionally, <clears throat> I have spent inordinate amounts of time sifting through data, analyzing it, figuring out what works, what doesn't, making severe mistakes and learning from that. If I can come into a situation of handicapping a game uh, and I have all that base knowledge and something comes across that indicates, oh, here's something that might want to change your mind, I get to sift it through. I get to filter it through what I already know. And it allows me to kind of get to advanced levels of analysis on a game because I'm not doing the basic stuff. I've got that, I've got a baseline, and I know a lot, and I can focus now on some of the more nuanced information. This comes into play specifically for me, the best case example is in picking the Super Bowl. Um, it's, it's the thing that I do the best. Over the last 15 years, I've called correctly 14 out of the 15 main game outcomes um, and done a bunch of prop bets and done really well on those too. Uh, that offers me, that game offers me the ability to spend two weeks with a full base knowledge of how to bet NFL and how to bet NFL Super Bowls, and then I get to look at all the little nuanced information. Uh, when I started out, I, I couldn't possibly do that. I would never get to those advanced levels of looking at the nuances and, and looking for angles and edges that aren't initially thought of. I'd be busy spending that time on the base set of analysis. So it does matter. Experience absolutely matters. And the more you do this, the more you gather that experience, if you store it in a way that you can access later on and it doesn't go in one ear and out the other, it's going to benefit you. Okay, final principle she, she proposes or, or mentions is that two sets of belief systems can have equivalent real world performance while being mutually contradictory. One person can think a zebra is a black horse with white stripes. Another can think of it as a white horse with black stripes. Different beliefs, same outcome. And what this means to me is that there can be different approaches to successful handicapping. I approach it very much from an analytical and statistical standpoint, layered on top of uh, with, with, with a heavy dose of understanding human behavior and psychology of other bettors, of the betting market, of the players and the coaches. Uh, and that's my stuff. That's what works for me. What would never work for me is using gut feel and watching a game and saying, oh, I, I really believe based on having watched tons of games or played this sport that X is going to happen and Y is not. In fact, I've learned for me that it's the opposite. If I rely on gut feel, if I'm watching the game and let my eyes lead me, I inevitably get it wrong. I think this is one of the reasons why sports betting is so hard to win, especially NFL, which people watch uh, with tons of attention and, and and your eyes can fool you. I believe that at least. So I'm willing to take the gut feel out of it. But I'm not going to dismiss, dismiss that there might be some people that are successful with that approach. And we both come up with the same recommendation about a team for totally different reasons. <clears throat> and what I need to do in that case and that other person, if we're talking or comparing, is not get too caught up in my way is right or look, it's a black horse with white stripes or it's a white horse with black stripes and miss, miss uh, keep, keep our eye on the ball, which is who do we like and, and are we agreeing on that? So remember uh, that different approaches and, and different data can lead you to the same conclusion for different reasons. Okay, so anyway, I thought this would be helpful. Uh, it was something I enjoy talking about because I love thinking about statistics. And this person uh, put into words a lot of the stuff that I kind of know inherently but wouldn't be able to articulate just off the top of my head. She did a great job of it. I thank her for that. And uh, I wanted you to hear my thoughts on that as it relates to sports handicapping. Good luck to you.